bathroom. That's just watching and thinking like, oh, so that's what hepatitis looks like. Yeah. Uh, I remember my brother and I, I forget where we were, but we were staying in a hotel room. And, you know, late night television came on and there it was like some documentary about giving head. And there it was just like late night TV, not pay-per-view, not anything. Yeah. Um, just like some like weird ass PBS documentary. And about so, giving head. About giving head. And so there was, was Andy a, Dick the instructor? No, I don't think so. But there was like a long section where like women would place like condoms in their mouths and practice by like putting it on like cucumbers, yeah, and like carrots and things. Mm. And so, young adolescent Bill is naturally aroused by this. So I moved <laughs> from like laying on the top of my bed to like going under my covers. My brother's like, "Oh, <laughs> something going on over there." And I was like, "Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Leave me alone." But yeah, there was something going on. It was sexy yeah. as hell. I remember one thing that was really funny. Um, my brother and I, we had to go to uh, Cleveland for the epileptic overnight sleep study. And I think we were like, there the first night. Oh, I, 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 yeah, this this whole story is great because we were supposed to Wait, be... Are we recording audio? Are we yeah, yeah, we're already recording. Nice. I, I got... I didn't start into the Tommy Lee Dick part. Mm. It was right when uh your hotel story. But so so we go to this hotel in Cleveland. It was just me and my brother. This was like three years ago. And I think we came real late and we 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 sh- we like got off our flight at like eleven at night and we're supposed to be sleep deprived for the next day because of the sleep um study. Mm. So I'm like, well fuck, we're in Cleveland I'm I'm honestly not tired at all because we're we were on a flight sitting on our asses. Why not go check out Cleveland? And my brother's like, "No, nah, man, we don't know where the fuck we are. We might be in a bad neighborhood." I'm like, "Well, fuck, let's catch up with Bone Thugs." You know exactly right. So Cleveland rocks. Yeah. Cleveland rocks. <laughs> so, so so I uh, I went to a local um I went I went to a local uh, bar, walked in. On the middle of an open mic. So I'm like, great. I suck at stand-up. This is the best place to suck at it because I don't know anybody here. And uh, I think this is where I realized I'm not homophobic and I may be bi-curious because <laughs> the bartender was uh, uh, super cute, su- super cute, super gay. And I, I asked him, I go, hey, man, can I get in on this open mic? And I was like leaning. I was trying to be quiet because... They're doing their improv thing. You don't want to like talk over them. So how do I get in on this? He's like, well, it depends. Uh, am I buying you drinks or are you buying me drinks? And I'm like, well, we can do a little more than that if you get me in on this. He's like, oh, they already started, but that's okay. We, we don't have to watch this. Let's go and back. I'm like, I just want to get on the open mic and I'm not gay. <laughs> Fuck off. <you> know? <laughs> and I, I think, I think I don't remember if I start, if he started kissing me and I went along with it, but I mean, yeah. So I so I go back to the hotel. Wait, he was on the clock, just looking for smooches. Yeah, looking for sm- and and I Cleveland. I wasn't getting paid, so fuck you, no smooches, man. Mm. No, but I so then I went back to the hotel, and I don't know if this is what normal a normal thing. I always love like teasing and bothering people <laughs> to sleep. I just I I think. Growing up with John, I I think we just used to always crack jokes and just bother the fuck out of each other before we went to sleep. Or maybe that was just me. I think it was just you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And especially with my brother. Like, I love bothering the fuck out of him before we fought. So we're at this hotel. And we had one of those rooms where, you know, the they have that middle door to the next room Mm -hmm. where the other person has to open. And I don't know. This is just a me and brother thing. We... I used to make fun of him because I could actually do like a good Arnold impression, like I, I, this kombucha here is full of vitamins. Wow, it's so good! I, I I tell you, you have to hate Trump. You have to vote for me. It's so good. Ah. And and I, I even if that's bad, I did it better than him. Sure. So he would just. I remember his first impression. It would just. It was just like. Ah, 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 ah. 
He, and he didn't know how to say anything. Disrespectful. He, he didn't know how to say anything. He would just grunt. That so, man is a former governor, and you should tell your brother to show some respect. Okay. Well, all night we were making these noises, <laughs> full volume. <laughs> we're just, we're just, we can't fall asleep, and all you hear is, <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> all right, your turn. <laughs> we're just doing, we're doing it for like an hour to try and like just have you know hurt where you're laughing so hard your tonsils hurt yeah and then there that, 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 knocking that, on the door that's when we fell asleep because we did it so long we heard that we we did it louder because we heard the shower next door so we're like oh people won't complain about noise so we do it the loudest we can and then all you hear is like a baby starts crying <laughs> that, that had to be so tormenting uh, arnold's having a fucking heart attack next door <laughs> <laughs> so this episode of hear nothing see nothing say nothing is brought to you by the cleveland chamber of commerce yes and come to which, cleveland. which arnold is uh trying to get voted in now since he's not a, he can't be president so no but he'll stay hungry <laughs> that's that's a joke no one will get but <laughs> i i get it man. that you when, get it when, he, but when him and jeff bridges are naked smoking weed and lifting <laughs> he's working out in a batman costume <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to all of our viewers out there stay hungry is a movie which features arnold schwarzenegger what was his like joe montana was his name and he was supposed to be like the typical american boy yeah, with, with like a super thick german accent I and just have speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> this is a condition. And it was about like a weightlifting competition, and he could only work out in a Batman con uh, costume, and he played the fiddle. So <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the movie. That uh, sounds like his real life. I, I thought yeah, it was right. a documentary. <laughs> what year is that from? Oh, my God. Like 1960, maybe? 69? Uh, 70? Well, no, way later than that. Hang on. Let's, I've got my Google Home pocket what year was stay hungry released stay hungry was released on may 10th 1984 oh 1984 way off but but what i'm off because the whole movie's black and white no it's not it is yeah is it really yeah are you sure i'm positive dude what that's the best part about when you get torrents especially now because you don't want to get caught with too much shit you just get collections, like you get the Al Pacino collection, sure. you get every movie. So I got the Arnold collection, and here's another funny thing. You get the whole Arnold collection, so you get a shitload of crap he was in that nobody heard about, probably not even him because it's so bad. One of the things on there... Hercules it, in New York? Yeah. A, a, everything that he's in is on there, the entire collection. And the thing that made me laugh the most, when I was young, we went to Universal Studios... And they had the Terminator Two 3D ride. Yeah, they have that little 15 clip that you see when right before you're in the ride and you're strapped to the chair, <laughs> and it's and it's really awkward and funny because you know the the Edward Furlong John Connor, sure the in in the movie yeah. the kid in the in when they taped Terminator Two, I think he was like 14 or something. And he went through that fucking growth spurt. Sure, so, puberty. So, so, like, when they made the Terminator 2 3D The Ride, he's, like, 18 <laughs> but, and <laughs> sitting on a fucking motorcycle with this guy. So it's like Terminator, you know, broke back mountain at this point. You know. Nice. This is why I cannot ever be human because it, it's not getting up, you know. But, yeah. So talking about movie reviews. I got to mention this because it blew my mind. Um, I went on a site. I was just really getting into ho just horror in general sure. because I never got into, um, I think we were talking about before, like the whole classic uh, black and white ones like Black Lagoon, Creature of sure, Frankenstein. Like the Invisible Man yeah. and the Wolf. So, so far I love the Wolfman and the Mummy the best. Yeah. That's, that's I that's think I like the Mummy better. Lon Chaney yeah. was both of them. If I'm not mistaken, I think I think in uh, the Mummy. Yeah, I thought it was that uh, Boris Karloff. Oh, maybe that was it. I think that's yeah. Maybe, but um, so Lon Chaney was the Wolfman. Boris yeah. Karloff was like everyone. Yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. <laughs> Only reason why I remember is because they have clips of Wolfman in Sandlot mm. when he rips through the screen. Yeah, but 
any anyways um so i was trying to look up like what's actually the most fucked up scary movies you have to see and they made you know all all these top 10 lists yeah. these days and they had a, a bunch of shit on there and a lot of the stuff i checked out like have you guys heard of am 1200 yes you have about uh mk ultra isn't that just like a snuff film or no am i where it's like t- taped like blair witch it sounds familiar. It, but I, I tell watched us about it. I watched. I, I watched thirty minutes of it, and I really was disappointed because they. It's a. It's a real movie, taped like it's supposed to be a documentary, like Blair Witch, and it's just a guy. Um, they started out with a bunch of clips with like Reagan speeches and Bush speeches, and th- the basic premise implied is that these. Uh, college grads are obsessed with the whole energy around MK Ultra and the the myth the conspiracy so they're tra- they're making a documentary on how we're going to delve into this and find out the answers okay and i watch only 30 minutes but it's just they sh- they show these clips and then it goes to him showing like all his evidence and all his research and then his next day his friend disappears <gasps> So I'm like, okay, this is filmed with like a phone camera and then you just have a missing cast member the next day. Great. I, me and Gavin could have made this, you know. So I stopped watching that and I started sure. going down the line of what else is crazy. Yeah, what else was on the list? My buddy at work told me, Martyrs, you cannot watch Martyrs. And he usually exaggerates shit i'm like man you get you get offended by everything you you think everything is fucked up you say everything is epic and i put martyrs on i kelly had to work late so it's like i'm the only one so maybe i was in the perfect environment too dude this movie was so mentally straining and just incredibly uh sort of where you're 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 feeling the movie. You're feeling the torture. You're fe- well. Okay, I'll tell you. It's it starts out with this little Asian girl who's like ten or twelve. You you guys don't care about spoilers, right? She's running away from this. She got held captive since birth at the in like this weird warehouse. By the way, it's a Canadian French movie. Perfect. And they try and like a it, foobar. Yeah, but this this movie they actually like wanted to ban it to be screened anywhere anywhere. Okay. It, it was so banned. It was in two, released in 2008, and already 10 years later, in 2014, 15, they wanted to re-release an American version and just really soft it down. And when you see the original, you're like, what the fuck? Because they wanted to make the or like the new character like Hermione. <laughs> uh-huh. so, but anyway, the original version is just, so this girl's abducted. She's been held captive. They show how, and it starts off sort of documentary-like where, this um, psychiatrist at a in, in, uh, institution is saying she was held here this many years. She doesn't speak. She was tied to a chair with a hole in it to shit and piss, and then she was just felt uh, fed kind of mashy grub that you get fed in like prisons. Okay, and nobody knows past that. So this girl, she develops a friend, and it's the only person that she talks to at the institution. And they find, and and they pass by a few years, and they find out that the friend wanted just to be friends with her because she was a young girl who had a lesbian urge for her. So she sort of was like fell in love with her. Mm. She didn't like, she wasn't really doing like, oh, why don't you talk? What happened to you? It's sort of like I'm just in love with you. Sure. And so the thing is, uh, they're trying to find out what happened to her. What's your story? She's like, I was tortured for years, and the basic plot of it is there's this, you know how Get Out, there's this, you know what, this was pretty much Get Out, but a good movie. That's what it was, okay? Ooh, the line's <laughs> been drawn. <laughs> because, okay, here, you know how in Get Out, there's this underground elite society that sells and auctions slaves? Yes. So in this one, there's this underground elite society of, like, British royalty people who... They believe that when you get tortured to a certain extent, it breaks you down mentally and spiritually to a point where you can see into the afterlife and you can see what it's like and you and you have just a new power. 
Okay. So they just and for some reason. Wait, is so, that the spoiler? Like that's yeah. why they were torturing her? Yeah, yeah, and, and and but but it gets it just keeps getting worse because what happens is they, um, for some from according to their research and, and like the person's explaining the person the leader of the group, she's like, the reason why we do this, well well. What happens is they, the the they're like fifteen. Moves on the the girl and her and her uh, lesbian lover, and she's like, I gotta kill this family that fucking did all this to me. And you go like you don't know this though when you're watching the movie. It's just this basic family, and it goes from like this girl being lonely in this institution to boom, like she's just shotgunning a ten year old in the chest, another an, another you know her sister who's twelve, okay. and then the father and the dad and. They're hiding the bodies, and the lesbian lovers like, "I'll do anything for you." To do. So the and and then the story is when the girl escaped, she could have helped out another girl that was also getting tortured, but but she wanted to save her life. So now for the rest of her life, she gets haunted by this girl. She gets chased by this girl because she reached the this girl stayed there to reach the afterlife. And basically, out of every so how far in the movie are we now? Like this is like thirty minutes. minutes in. This is like th- this is like thirty minutes in. Okay. And 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 so there's this weird naked girl, corner, sort of like the Conjuring, like or like the Shining. How there's a random zombie girl. There's this girl that's just c- completely fucking cut up, and it's graphic as shit. Just chasing her all the time and stabbing her, because she's like, "You got to kill these motherfuckers. You got to kill them." And and so they kill the family, and she's like, "What do I do? I killed them. Why are you still?" She. Uh, the lesbian girl is really good at surgery, so so the sure. the the weird uh, messed up cut up girl pops out of nowhere, completely like almost completely peels off the back of the the girl that got abducted, and the girl that got abducted she's like I got to get my back sewed together. Why the fuck are you still going after me? I killed the family, and she just grunts. She's like, No, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And she's like, All right, well, I'm sick of fucking seeing you. And she just slits her own throat. And then this huge like SWAT team, which is the elite, jumps into the house and they're like, "Yeah, you know what? You don't know how organized we are. Guess what? You're the new victim to the lesbian girl." And they go underground into this torture. Like it looks like it, it, they basically got way more organized, and instead of a warehouse, they have this huge underground bunker that looks like an advanced. Uh, it looks like a space level in ha- Halo. They just have all these rooms where they torture these. And, and and this is where the leader, this old lady, she looks like Queen Elizabeth. She's explaining. She's oh. like, so we torture these people because we want to see the afterlife. And for some reason, due to our research, now that we've become organized and people can't escape, like Lucy upstairs, we found out that the most vulnerable people and the most um, able to take pain are adolescent little girls. So guess what? You're next. And, dude, there's just, like, 20 minutes. I'm, like, watching this movie. I'm, like, how much worse can it get? There's 20 minutes where this, where one of the members comes in. He's, like, this John Cena huge guard. And for 20 minutes, maybe 30, he, like, beats the shit out of this fucking 14-year-old girl. Beats, like, p- punches her in the face, punches her in the stomach. Her cartilage pops out of her nose. And then she passes out. So he's, like, oh, you know what? That's not enough. He gives like acetone. She's knocked out, so he puts like acetone underneath her nose to wake up. He's like, "All right, you're waking up. Torture you some more. Beat you up again." And does it for like thirty minutes, and then you keep going to the movie, going going along. And then the guards they report to the old lady. They're like, "Dude, we think she can see the afterlife. We think she can see it. We don't know if you can. It, we don't know if we're right, but you got to see this. This girl's a champ." And then it kind of goes back to, well, what did they do to make her see the afterlife or see the other world? Dude, they show this whole thing. They fucking skin her alive from uh. from neck down. And then they show her like still like trembling breathing with all her flesh off. Uh. And, th- and, then, and then to make it even more depressing, that Queen Elizabeth lady goes in there to try and check on her. She's like, well, I don't see anything. So all of this was done for nothing. Well, there's only one way to see the other world. And she just shoots herself. <laughs> the movie ends. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
I was, makes yeah. you think. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't ever want to see that fucking movie again. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah. And the, the worst part is I'm like, oh, Kelly, can we watch this with Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice little family time. Have you ever seen, um, what, like, Evil Dead I thought was pretty bad. Like, that was pretty gruesome. You know what? I saw uh, this French movie. Maybe it's something with the French, but it's called In My Skin. Yeah, I remember that. Ooh, yeah. what is that about? It's about, it's it's kind of like what Phil was talking about, where you have like half hour to hour scenes of just ridiculous um, <laughs> torture. And it, it's, it's about this lady who um, develops an addiction to eating herself so she okay. like cuts herself up and then like takes pieces of skin off her and then there's like this long ass scene of her cutting herself and eating the skin <laughs> huh so she's an hardcore version of gold member yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly she doesn't wait for its appeal <laughs> yeah that, i don't care about my faja <laughs> or what he does <laughs> That. So we're truly in the golden age of film. Mm-hmm. We're reaching new heights. This is good. Have you ever seen The Evil Dead, though? Either of you? Uh, I think I have, but I don't really I, remember. I always get, um, you, uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe the title Dead. I always get Evil Dead mixed up with Dawn of the Dead. And then there's, what's that, Army of something? Army of Darkness yeah. is a sequel to The Evil Dead. Okay. Um, Evil Dead. I, I thought Evil Dead and Army, I thought those were kind of like comical sort of parody type movies. I think it gets more so in the later movies. Yeah. Because I think there was three of them. I don't recall the third's title. But the first one was really fucked up. Like, um, I don't know, someone gets raped by a haunted tree. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like pretty graphic. Oh, wait, no, I'm pissed off. Like, <laughs> that... So that was brutal. Like, there's, like, some dude with a nail gun that's just, like, impaling people. And, like, yeah. that's just, like, give you, like, the willies. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it was it was really, really dark. I don't know. The older I get, the less interested I am in, like, in that movies. violence and gore. Yeah. Not horror movies, because I'll always love horror movies. Just the gore, right? But, like... I saw the first two or three Saw movies in theaters, and they're all on Netflix, or they were. I don't know if they are anymore. But, like, I tried to sit through them, and it's just like, nope, no thank you. Like, oh, cool, like, crawl into the oven to, like, or, like, an oven. Yeah, to get a key. Yeah, and then, like, oh, you break it. Oh, now you're cooking alive. Oh, there's a key at the bottom of this, like, pile of used hypodermic needles. Yeah, yeah. Like, ugh. ugh. Like, I don't know. I just don't. Or, Or your head opens up with a like reverse bear trap right yeah exactly right or like oh the key is inside your eye have fun like prying that shit out yeah. like uh, so you know when i was in elementary or no when i was in like middle school or high school when that shit came out you know i was like oh cool this is awesome this is great like oh sure a woman being frozen alive and like this and that but like i go back and revisit them and it's like yeah. nope can't do it i watched the human centipede um yeah, but I don't know. Was that on the list of your like? I I didn't. I, I think I saw it once, and I just thought it was kind of d- dumb. Really? So, I I it's gory, but it but the whole premise of it is. I mean, the whole idea of it is sure. Just like, yeah, agreed. But it is really gruesome. Oh yeah, it is. Like, really, yeah, definitely. If you buy into the stupid idea, yeah, like it's just like. Oh, eh, eh, eh. And, and what's weird is, um, the friend that I was talking with who recommended it, he's just like, there's a whole like catalog of these weird french movies and 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 he said yeah in my skin was on there and i told him how like because you sh- you told me about that movie john yeah i watched oh, that with my dad i was fucked up how'd your <laughs> dad react because yeah. i know. fast forwarded through it yeah yeah, yeah I, no thanks and, and 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 there's a huge he um my buddy steve at work he told me there's a there's another one called like frontier or inside and or Frontier, I think, is just a whole sort of movie about your sort. I think it's just um, pretty much a very graphic version of the concentration camps and the torture, like experiments and acid and gas chambers and all that shit. And then I think inside is he was telling me that's that's really cool because it's like um, 
but some lady uh her baby is ripping out of her fucking womb and she tries to live after it like punches through or something i don't know uh, but so i just read all seven of the chronicles of narnia cool on a related note <laughs> yeah um and it was pretty stimulating i don't know i recommend it um are you on um goodreads.com by any chance i don't have an account i consulted sometimes if i need like a book recommendation for yeah. my next read mm-hmm. um but why do you ask are you on goodreads i i recently joined uh well i joined like a year ago and then i forgot about my account but the funny thing is i joined a year ago because i was in a in that comedy improv class yeah and yeah i i guess i give sort of a intimidating uh feel to certain people so in my <laughs> Sure. So, so in my class, uh, the teacher said that we should tra- – the first thing about being more comfortable with each other to do improv and to be ourselves is to learn a little bit about each other. <laughs> so she wants everybody to bring in a book that we trade with each other. Yeah. And nobody wanted to trade with me. <laughs> so I traded with the teacher. I think I brought Clockwork Orange. Okay. And she gave me this book. I hated it so much that I joined Goodreads just to review it and shit talk it, and th- and that's. But th- did it get like awesome reviews on Goodreads? Was it like it, five it was, stars? It was honestly balanced. I, I really, think, I, I think right now it's at maybe like three point five four, but a lot of the good reviews are. Well, I, I'd have to tell you about the book, but I'll I'll try and keep it short. The thing is, there, there's. It's it's a book based in like seventeen eighteen hundreds. Okay, was it called, Johnny Tremaine? Uh, no, no. I, I and and it was it was kind of confusing. So I don't even know if I got the story right. But what it is is there's a huge, uh, really renowned like hipster poet named w- Rilke or something, and this. The 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 summary of it is it's the fir- it's the first fucking emo kid in history (laughs) because so so they i I don't know if they i don't remember if they both live in germany i I think they both live in germany there's a huge fucking um renowned poet but he's huge he's hugely known in the gesundheit he's hugely known in the underground of poetry because that's that shit kind of like and gesundheit thank you (laughs) You need me to move the ashes away from me? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Hang on, but, I think I've got one more. One more? Uh, 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 uh. Hang on, it's uh, coming. It's coming. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Good. So, so, that, so there's this huge poet, and there's this this just amazingly little bitch guy obsessed with this poet, and he the, it's it's got great like poetry in it. The it's very descriptive it's very sort of it takes you in that exact place in that exact seat describes your entire environment around you yeah but the thing is this guy keeps t- he's like oh well nobody likes me uh, everybody's sneezing around me no, sure it's no. the worst and, and and no and and i don't know what to do with my i could join the military and travel and experience the world Maybe taste some different wines, but I, I'd rather, I'd rather meet you and write poetry. And I don't know, Aww. I don't know where to go. And I, I've, I've got this job at a coffee shop, and there's different people going in there who are more successful than me. Ooh. But I don't want to talk to them. Everybody hates me. I, you're the only one I admire. And so this whole book is, this poet collected all these fucking letters from this like emo kid. And then I think at the, by by the end of the book, I'll. I think none of the letters actually got to the fucking poet, and the and the kid ends up killing himself. So I don't know, Aww. but 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 the, so but, it was a good book. Yeah, you the, really the, enjoyed the, it. The, the point was that here's this guy. He join. He ends up joining the military. He ends up traveling. He ends up working at all these different. You know, especially in that time. You know, you got to remember, it puts you in the book. You're in the fucking 1800s. I don't know France. You don't know the outside world. There's no internet. You don't. You don't know anything about other countries, other cultures. So you got an opportunity here to visit all these different places, have all, ch- check out all these different cultures, eat different foods, live a different life. 
and this guy just thinks everything is gloomy and shit. And phony, phony, phony. Everyone's yeah. a phony. So I had to, I had to give it a good. I had to give a really bad review. About that. I and, don't. And the re- the reason why I asked is because I I feel bad because I think I joined Goodreads just to shit talk books. Sure. Um. So I'm not on Goodreads, but I am a member of a book club. Yeah. And one of the books we read was absolutely awful. It was terrible. It was this book called La Rose. And it was about uh, an Indian reservation, and there's like a Native American couple that live on the reservation, but they're on, they're right on the border, and their neighbors are a bunch of white folk, and the Native American man is out hunting, and he is shooting at a deer, but LOL misses and kills his neighbor's son. So he kills the white guy's son. And so as like an act of atonement or an act of penance, he uh, trades his own son to the white family for the, the white kid, LaRose is his Was name. there an auction? To, there was not, no. Um, but I think based on what you've told me about Get Out, like you can definitely <laughs> see the LaRose influence. Yeah. So... They they trade away his son to, like, replace the son that he shot and killed. And, like, it's just a story about the family coping with, like, the son being gone. And, like, yeah. he has a bunch of sisters and they're all sad. They're like, I'm so sad our son is gone or our brother is gone. Yeah. Let's go Christmas shopping. And so it goes, like, really into detail about them Christmas shopping. And, like, they go to Subway and split a turkey sandwich and all this really obnoxious There's shit. There's a Subway back then? Well, it's like a a yeah. modern story yeah and they had a subway in town and they bought perfume but they couldn't get one perfume because it smelled like la rose <laughs> and it was like it, the it was, subway smells like la rose with the bullet through them yeah. no so la rose was the son that they traded dusty was the kid uh, that was uh. killed so it was just like this terrible terrible story about these two grieving families and at the end, uh, the Native American man takes the white man out to a field, and he's, I guess he's going to shoot him, mm-hmm. just because, like, why not? Yeah. Or no, the white man takes the Native American out to the field because he wants revenge for his dead son, and he goes to pull the trigger, and as it turns out, the son, who was traded, like went into the gun safe and like emptied out all the bullets yeah because you don't need that shit i guess and like the end that's the book (laughs) and we thought it was just like awful we hated it yeah and we go on goodreads and it just gets like awesome awesome reviews yeah everyone loves this fucking book dude i hate i hate that i don't get that shit man well i think it's just like my book club is me and three other 20-something dudes. Mm-hmm. And I think it was very much like a read for like housewives yeah, to be like, oh my God, the emotions or something. And yeah. I'm an emotional guy. I can like sympathize. I well, can empathize. I can feel things. But it's just like, no, like it's not an there's emotional not, book. There's not a lot of depth to it. No. It's depth for the average person, for the average Joe. Yeah. But then like- a, a big, like, part of the story was the the Native American daughters were in high school, and they were, oh, it's not uh, auditioning, like, trying out for, like, the volleyball team. Yeah. So, like, there's a huge section about them practicing for the volleyball team, and it's like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. And the ball smells like La Rose. Ooh. <laughs> And, like, they get the white neighbor girl to try out for the volleyball team, and I guess it's a tale of, like, camaraderie and, yeah, like, overcoming the odds. But, like, at the end of the day, it's just, like, very fucking it, stupid. And, and see, not not to rant again, not to interrupt you again. But, but see, that's, but like... I'm going to interrupt you. I, I could see that fucking book being, like, the number one book in today's social and whole oh, racial sure. climate, you know? Well, not even, like race but it's maybe race maybe maybe people just love that like ooh, the white man and the the native american are finally 
coming to terms yeah. with all the grief. Maybe the son being killed is a metaphor. Dances with crackers. For, yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 exactly yeah. right. So. Uh, so. Uh, so. It's, it's, yeah. It's, so it's, I don't trust Goodreads. And you, and you know, I, I, I want to say this before I forget. I think a lot of people who review that kind of shit, it's not just about average Joes who don't have depth. Well, I guess it is, but but what I've noticed with people that I work with, we get sl- dude. I no joke. My job, you have to work your fucking ass off from six a.m. to eleven a.m., and then the rest of the day, you're pretty much just like kind of like emergency contact for the truckers. Sure. So we don't do shit. So we sort of um will uh, message each other. Hey, check out this song. What do you think of this? Hey, check out this article. Isn't this funny? We just recommend shit to each other. Yeah. And what I've noticed is a lot of people who don't really, everybody thinks they're an artist these days, but sometimes you have to accept that you're made to be a fan. And I think there's a lot of fans out there who think they're artists. <laughs> and, and what happens is that a lot of these people, same thing with Netflix, all this shit that's five stars is fucking horrible. And then I watch something that's one star and I love it. And it's I, I think it's because a lot of people, uh, like, like one of my friends, I go, hey, check out this i check out it was actually yeah check out ghost main what do you think of this and i purposely sent him just the audio link and he didn't respond for like 10 minutes he's like oh man this is just some fucking bored ass white kid in florida trying to be tough rapping about black metal and satan he, he he's not a thug he's not from the hood i'm like yeah but the, but it's good yeah he that's like that's the new thing is aren't you sick of bitches gold and you know fucking whatever it's 2018 everyone doesn't have nobody has bitches and gold everyone's in fucking power no you get you get my point though it's something sure. fucking new it, all that all that bitches gold rap is old 90s shit i'm so fucking i i had to stop listening to gucci Mane because that's what every single fucking thing is you know and this like for example this kid he had to read his whole description of this rapper before he could judge it. And I'm like, and he's like, oh yeah, th- this 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 is nothing to do with the hood. I'm like, how do you know? You know that from right. one song? And because I knew he read, read a review. And that's sure. why I think a lot of things like you were saying, LaRose, or how does this shit get five stars? It's because people hear, well, this is sure. the biased review. Well, this is how you're supposed to feel about this. And that's exactly how I felt about Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> That was the, so fucking dumb. Yeah, I do you, do you remember that, that shit, John? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember it. You remember? You remember Bill? Yeah, yeah, dude, hated that book. That whole book. Well, things used to be like this, if you ask me. Back in the day, you do you want to know? I guess you can tell me. I don't. Well, and then you, you could you could hear him putting his fucking elbow on his knee, you know old man knee. Yeah. Let me tell you this, son. Well, this is how it, you know, that whole fucking book is just an old bastard ranting, you know? Right. If I want that, I'll just record myself 20 years from now. But know? the old bastard dies. Now the young man is making millions yeah. off of it. Exactly. Which is the thing I always thought was like kind of fucked up. Like, it wasn't, like, the author had nothing to do with it. Yeah. He was, like, talking to someone, publishing this other guy's thoughts and his stories. It's like, the, it's like what I was saying about the letters with the poet. Yeah, you know exactly right. Um, so, and then, and then, didn't that author make like four more books about the same situation or something? Isn't there like probably. days of some? I don't know. What was God? Who Mitch wrote Mitch album? Yep, bingo. Good memory recall. Did you look that up? You just I, know? I have I have selective memory. Oh no. sure. No, I do, I do. I just remember random shit. Same thing. Um, did you ever read the things they carried? I believe so. It was a Vietnam book. Did you ever read that? No, no. Oh, shit. I wanted to read that, but I didn't. No, I know I know what you're talking about. So it's a story about this guy who goes to Vietnam, and he's telling all these stories. And then maybe like three quarters of the way through the book, he like reveals that he never actually went to Vietnam. But like you're like reading the story like it's all true. Yeah. And then he lets us up like, that's not how it happened. But that's how it could have happened. <laughs> And it's like, well, this is fucking worthless. Yeah. <laughs> and the argument is like, 
does it matter, man? Does it matter if it's true? Because it made yeah. you feel. It made you think, man. He's he's yeah. Dennis Hopper in the Easy Rider, right? Yeah, exactly. Maybe. No. <laughs> I I know the Easy Rider soundtrack. I've never seen the movie. Oh. But Jack Nicholson gets killed. So. He's just he's like a paranoid hippie. I think. Yeah. That that is on acid all the time. So it's. I don't know. But again, like both of these critically acclaimed books that I just didn't really care for. Yeah. Does that make me a bad person? I don't think so. You got two cigarettes. May I have one? Uh, if not, that's cool. Uh, it's cool, man. Yes, it's cool. you can have one. And I'm going to save the last one for did something you wa- else. Yeah, did you want the last one and then, and then the other one for something else? I don't care. Uh, that was going to be my plan. I was okay. going to smoke another. Yeah, is yeah. that okay? Yeah, that's completely Will cool. Will you smoke another cigar? You've got like 14 well, of them. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if you want to be hear this. Uh, no, it, it's all good, man. I'm I'm chill. The but uh, it, the, it reminds me of um, how we're mentioning like all these classical novels and shit. I also wa- rewatched, but I remember having to read The Outsiders. Sure. Which is, it's a good classical novel, but you know what, dude? I completely forgot because, all right, here's what I remember. I watch, they made us watch that movie in school. Sure. After everybody read the book for a project. What was that S.E. Hinton? Yeah. A- and I, I was like, w- w- I remember watching it and I, and I remember thinking like, why, this is about greasers, about the 50s, about fucking, you know, the whole rockabilly scene and the socias and why why didn't I like this? You know, when you're a kid, you're like, I'm gonna like everything about greasers. I yeah. want to be that rock and roll guy. You sure, know? John Travolta. Yeah. Well, he's he's not in there, but it's like, no, but you know, yeah, Greece. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so hey. <laughs> yeah. It's, so so I'm watching this, and I'm like, why? I, well, no, I'm remembering it before I watch it again. Why didn't I like it? So I rewatch it, and I know why, dude. It's f- fine. But not it, enough violence. No, no well, I, yeah, it could have been. Not enough more, people cutting dude, themselves up and eating themselves. <laughs> dude, it felt like it had a really like in the closet undertone because every I'm I kid you not, you can make a drinking game out of this. Every ten minutes, there's a fucking grown man crying and cuddling with another man. The only character that doesn't cry and and like and like lean on so, on another guy, Pony is, Boy. Is, no, no, fucking uh, Tom Cruise. Everybody else, two bit. W- w- what's his name? Uh, D- Derry is Patrick Swayze, the bro- the big brother. Then there's Rob Lowe, which is the middle brother. He cries as well. They all cry. Pony Boy fucking cries. What about everything? Oh, I ordered a hot dog, not fries. <laughs> 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 you know, and fucking, and then uh, uh, what, what's his name? Um, Matt Dillon. He, the guy who gets out of jail. You know what I'm talking about, or no? No, I've never read the book and I've never seen the movie. Okay, so yeah, no, but every yeah, Matt Dillon is uh yeah he's he's the guy who gets out of jail and he's trying to get back he's trying to get back to like regular life, but he gets back in the greaser life and ends up dying at the end. But sure. point is, every fucking guy in that gang is just leaning on someone <laughs> and crying, and I'm like, what? You know, I could see, I I remember now. Holy fuck! I'm in seventh grade. I'm like. Why are these? They're are crying. Gre- a are lot. they supposed to be pussies like are this? Are they gangsters? Yeah, it was it, it was it was a emo Maury episode of the Warriors. You know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking what the fuck is going on? I mean, John, do you remember that? No, I have. I mean, I've seen the movie. I've read the book, but it was so long ago. I just I don't really. Yeah, I, remember everybody crying. <laughs> it makes yeah. me want to cry. It, and it, and it's some of the scenes are so awkward because it's like yeah. So there's the. The big brother is Patrick Swayze, middle brother is Rob Lowe, and then Pony Boy is the, the younger brother, and it's like spread apart. First Pony Boy's crying like, "I can't. We just killed somebody. I don't. We gotta run away. My brother's gonna give me a beating. My brother, the d- dairy, you know, P- Pat Swayze, he's gonna give me a beating." And then, the movie moves on like a half hour. And Rob Lowe, I hate it. I hate it when Big Brother Dairy beats you up. I, I just, I gotta be in between all of it. 
And then all the way to the end of the movie, Patrick Swayze, you know, oh, I just hate beating you up. <laughs> it's just like, dude, what the fuck, man? I thought we were sensitive in 2018, you know? Th- th- is this how much people fucking cried back then? Greasers, the people who were supposed to be badasses, you know? The tough guys. What the, what the fuck are the socias? The socias are like the higher class, the, the like mods in there. What the fuck are they? Are they just listening to Sky and getting high? Because now I want to be fucking high <laughs> yeah, class, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> C- cry- crying from laughter instead of you know oh I, man i don't want that to be written by like a 15 year old or something i i as he hinton i don't know if i don't know maybe maybe he was 15 when he wrote let's, all right let's see if google knows how old was se hinton how old was se hinton when he wrote the outsiders 17 years old. According uh? to Cliff's Notes, The Outsiders was published in 1967 when Hinton was only 17 years old and attending Will Rogers High School. Yeah. There we go. 17. Sounds like a 17-year-old crybaby. <laughs> Shit. Fucking cocksucker. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> good Good for S.E. Hinton. Yeah. What, what does the S and the E stand for? Does anyone know? No mm. idea. Nope. All right, I don't feel like asking my phone. It doesn't right. matter. Uh, C.S. Lewis, the gentleman who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, it yeah. stands for Clive Staples. Mm. Lewis. So, what does R.L. Stein stand for? Ooh, I don't remember. That's a good question. I don't remember. I should know. And you guys want to know why? You guys want to know why? Do tell. I got a really great story because. So everybody was obsessed with R.L. Stein. For those of you who don't know, yeah, dude, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Did, did yep. he do Fear Street as well? I think so. Yeah. 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 He did. Fear Street was sort of like more teen, but it was the teen version of Goosebumps. But anyways, he got so fucking big, Goosebumps and everything. And then Gavin really loves Goosebumps now. And I gave him, I had an awesome because <laughs> we had to, the Goosebumps got every fucking kid in our generation into reading, pretty much. Yeah. And then not only, you know, the whole 600-minute go to Great America. Anyways, started reading a shitload of Goosebumps. Started buying them through mail because you get a cool glow-in-the-dark Goosebumps wallet. that I get. <laughs> so then Kelly goes, hey, R.L. Stein is coming to Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago for a signing. And we go. Now as an adult... I don't really give a fuck about him. I mean, why? <laughs> sure. You know, why? Yeah. I I didn't even know he was alive still. Yeah. And we're in line. And I'm 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 t- I'm thinking to myself, fuck. Gavin's got his book to sign, and I gave him my glow in the dark wallet. What the fuck, man? What am I going to So, yeah. Look at this, man. I go up to him. I go, "Here. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I used to like you as a kid." Well, what, what, that's a perfectly good phone. I don't want to sign that. I'm like, no, dude, I'm a huge fan. He signed my fucking phone. Nice. <laughs> so Your phone is, is Stein. Oh. It's Stein by R.L. Sign. Yep. It's it's the haunted phone. Did he sound as Jewish as he made he, him sound? Yeah, dude, seriously. He's Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David combi- like really? mixed together. And yeah. And he, and he looks like, uh, what's his, George Costanza, sort of. That. So... Fair enough. Good for him, but, though. Great but yeah, author. Yeah, yeah, it was cool to meet him. Something you know from childhood. But um, yeah. And then once again, speaking of old classics, I watched Stand by Me. Nice, great fucking thing. And you know what? The best. I have to. This is probably be. This is like a good quote that I would even have tattooed on me. At the end of the movie, you remember what he says the, about friendship? The, those are the best friends I ever had. Yeah. The, probably won't ever have friends like yeah, that again. The, the best the best friends you have are when you're 12. And I think about that, and it's like, dude, these days, I, I, I one of my biggest qualities is I need fucking loyalty. And I remember growing up, like even in that mob book, he's like, you know, you know how you find a good fucking friend? You throw five sandbags into into a hefty bag in the trunk or in the back seat and you pick up your friend you go yo i need some help i got i fucked up we got to bury this guy and if they say yes that's a good friend and i i don't know i grew up with that type of mentality or like <laughs> like that like i i feel like i feel like a lot of my friends would i don't know if they would but point is that i was all about loyalty and and the crazy thing is that when you the older you get, people really cut you off easier, or 
they, there's just everybody's doing their own thing. And and what's crazy is when I was 12 in Borgia, like I got all these fucking friends on Facebook. I got friends. Oh, I make some comment about, I don't know. Oh, keep the black mass in Christmas. Some non, you know, anti-Christian thing. And five friends delete me that I that I met like last week, you know, and yeah, and yeah. and I got all these fucking friends from when I was twelve that are just like, oh yeah, crazy Phil going at it again, you know, and they just stay with you. And I think it's because like that's the people you grow up with and learn about shit, like, you know, broads, not you know, girls and getting into <laughs> trouble. Sure. And I don't know. I, I I think that's a great quote. I mean, how do you guys feel? I agree. Best friends that you meet are when you're twelve. Those are people that you. Those are people that you learn together how to be a fucking man. So what grade is 12 years old? Like, is that... Is that what? Well, eighth? Gavin's in 6th and he's in... Yeah, I think it's like 6th grade. Yeah, 6th, 7th grade. Yeah. Sixth, grade. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess. I'd say high school, but... High school, you meet the best a, friends. A lot of my high school friends were people I knew in middle school and elementary school. I've hung on to a lot of friends, but I've burned a lot of bridges, guys. <laughs> and you're so good at it. Yeah, you got to be good <laughs> at something, man. <laughs> that you found your strength. That's your calling. It's a job, and someone's got to do it. Man. Bridge burning. My my uh, my buddy at work said that. I, I think it was one of the days that I I pissed him off the day before, and I was and I I forgive and forget about shit in a minute. So I'm like, hey man, did you check out this album? Or did you check out? No, I said, "Hey, did you check out this movie?" And he just types, "They should make a movie about you, your interactions, and just call it the Agitator." <laughs> and then he didn't fucking <laughs> say anything else. <laughs> but it sounds like, about right. And and here I am not remembering that I pissed him off. So I'm like, "Uh, it sounds like a good movie, man. Yeah, I'll think about it. You want to help me with it? You know, <laughs> right? Who am I going to agitate then? <laughs> They're all." <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm. Uh, all right, you're good. Gonna get going. John's right. calling it, yep. and I second that. I'm getting pretty sleepy. I'm yawning into the microphone. Yeah. Uh, can we do like a quick farewell a wrap thing, up, John? Yeah. 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 I want right. to. Any anything good coming up that we should know about? Nothing. Anything good? Anything? Any any news up until the next? Might go skiing. There, right. you might go skiing with John. Yeah. Ooh, oh, the two of you are gonna go skiing. That's You're not allowed, Bill. Fine. No. This is a secret kind of club. Yeah, where no, we it's cool. I'm busy anyway. <laughs> I don't even want to go skiing with you guys. Um, I've got book club tomorrow. It's skiing for the Polskis. <laughs> right? You're putting the ski in Polski. Uh, <laughs> anyway, nah, I'm I'm doing a stand-up show next Sunday. but like, Oh, nice. Where's that at? Uh, at like Six Corners, like over by like Damon and Milwaukee. and. What's the place called? It's the Flatiron Building. Oh, I I think I know that. Yeah. Somewhere it's somewhere on Milwaukee, I think. Okay. Um, but Damon North and Milwaukee, right by that intersection. I you don't mean know. Damon. That's yeah. <laughs> David Carter. Yeah. But I like Damon. Yeah. Anyway, um, so no, you guys are gonna have so much fun without me. Whatever, that's cool. I'll One just hang out here and not go skiing. One thing I gotta tell you guys, especially, you you said you might not make it next Saturday, next show, right? Yeah. Okay. Next show, Bill. Please, are, are, do you watch shit on Netflix? Mm, Not really. No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but my fucking, <laughs> you ruined it, man. I'm just. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, oh, wait, I'm pissed off now. No. <laughs> and no, and my my favorite of all time. All right, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm gonna interrupt you. Okay. All right, keep going. Yeah, my 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 favorite of all time comedian ever, and I and I'll fucking say to the Tom Segura. He's he's just like George Carlin. So if you like George, but he's but he's, yeah. I don't know if you like George Carlin, but George Carlin got very very angry in yeah. his later years. Well, that's why I like him. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Anyway, but continue. Anyways, John he, wants to go. His, Tom Segura's new new uh thing is uh he's got two specials on Netflix already, okay. which I, I could watch him five times and they make me cry from laughter. His new one's coming out on next Friday, and then <laughs> and then Saturday we're having the episode. And actually, Saturday, if anybody wants to go, we can't go. I really didn't think... Brian Posen is in Chicago at the Beat Kitchen, 20 bucks. Wait, it's at the Beat Kitchen? Yeah. Really? Brian Posen? Yep. Huh? Yeah. We might might change plans, huh? 
Is that where you guys are? Oh, wait. Shit, no. Next Saturday? Yeah. We're supposed Zach, to be yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. While he's doing stand-up over yeah. there. All right, we'll talk. I, I we'll feel like I'm out. destined to go because uh, because he loves wrestling. He loves Roddy Rod Piper. He, he loves metal. Yeah. He's a metal head. And, and, there, and I went to Goodwill, and they had a mint condition figure of Roddy Rod Piper. <laughs> and I was thinking I might <laughs> get it. Did you get it? I, I was going to get it because it's 10 bucks at Goodwill. It's worth fucking 30 but I don't want to deal with the little bitches that are going to complain. Uh, it, there's a little bump on the on the edge. Dude, it's no, like, that'd be good. You're looking for decor for the basement. Uh, but like, I, I, I wasn't even a big fan of them. No? I, I went through a lot of shit trying to sell vinyl to people like, really, psychedelics, you know? Oh, and, so. And just, just vinyl, ner- and oh, my God, I sent it in a, like... I wrapped it up in bubble wrap, then a yellow envelope, then a fucking carton. This isn't waterproof. I want my money back. And I had to fucking, yeah. Really? I, yeah. That's what I had to do. I'm Wait, like, did they mail it back? Yeah, they mailed it back, and I had to give them the money back. And then I'm like, fuck this. I'm just selling the whole crate to, you know, Reggie's Rock Club. Or oh, you meant the vinyl, not y- the, y- yeah, yeah, the, the vinyl. The rowdy, rowdy Oh, yeah. No, 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 rowdy, rowdy. The rowdy, rowdy cannot be damaged by water. Yeah, he can. All right. Anyway, this has been <laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> episode ten thousand of <laughs> Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a wonderful day or evening or night, whatever. See you guys soon. <laughs>